Good evening, everyone. Just a few things before we get started this evening with our presentation. We want to thank you all for your time as we discuss travel and COVID-19 now and in the future. We're delighted with the interest and so pleased to see so, so many of you have given us your time this evening. First of all, some housekeeping items so that your screen isn't covered with the numbers um, of attendees and initials. What we would recommend that you do is go to the top of your screen and you're gonna see a little button that says view everyone and drop that window and you can click on a down arrow that will change this to hide everyone. And that should help kind of remove some of that from your screen so it's not covering up anything that would appear. We do welcome and encourage your questions, but the way that you're going to do that this evening is to chat those to us. You will notice that we have muted everyone and please, please don't unmute yourselves because we're getting noises from some of the homes of you that have. So please don't unmute. On the top of your screen, you're gonna see a little bubble that kind of reminds us of when the comic strips, when the people in the comics were talking and there'd be a little bubble. And that's the way that you're going to chat to us. And when you do that, it's going to come here and no one else is gonna see it. And when we go to answer those at the end of the presentation, we're going to read the questions, but we're not going to say who was asking or anything of that nature. So don't be shy if you're wondering um, something, I'm sure that everyone else is as well. So we will look forward to getting those. Sounds like we still have some people coming, but I think we're gonna go ahead and get started so that we can get through this and not take up too much of your time. We're going to be producing and we are hosting a Please Go Away vac Vacations informational presentation. Our motto over the last many years is small town caring worldwide since 1966. Tonight we have number two in a series of four that we hope will provide a lot of information that everyone is wondering during this very unusual time. As I mentioned, we've been in business for many years and we are now in our 54th year. Presenting tonight is myself, and for those of you who may not know me, I'm Paula Oxman. I've been with um, Cheyenne Travel Please Go Away Vacations. I'm in my 31st year, and also Larry Kopke, and I think the majority of you probably know Larry um, from having traveled with him over the last almost 54 years. So Larry, let's get started, and would you like to say a few words Oh, I'd be delighted to, and good evening, everyone. We do appreciate the time that you have given to us this evening, and uh, quite honestly, we are fighting a battle, and that's COVID, obviously. That's affecting each and every one of us, and it's affecting travel, but you know, probably some of the people and industries that are fighting and coming up with answers the hardest and the quickest is the travel industry and the cruise industry. And tonight, we have a special uh, guest company represented by Colette Vacations, who, although we've been celebrating for 54 years doing business, they are now in their 103rd year of operation. They are the oldest tour operator in the United States, and I need to tell you that their reaches are worldwide from the standpoint that they have hundreds of different itineraries, making thousands of departures annually to all seven continents of the world. And one thing that comes to my mind is that Colette's been here before. Uh, they were through the Great Depression, they were at the end of the First World War, they went through the Second World War, the Korean conflict, Vietnam, Ebola crises, uh, Spanish flu, all of these things, and so they are really part and parcel of expertise that we can have given to you this evening for your consideration because the purpose of these series of four sessions where we have guests from
from the travel and cruise industries uh, is to inform you and allow you to make proper decisions. Now, I'm going to have the pleasure now of introducing to you our guest presenter this evening, and that's Kenny Judd. Kenny is the Regional Director of Sales for the Central United States. Uh, he's been with Colette for 10 years. As I say, he's Business Development Manager uh, in the Oklahoma, Arkansas area and was promoted director to the Northeast United States. He lived in Massachusetts for two years before taking over as director of the Southeast United States. Presently, he serves as director of sales for the Central United States with nine different business development managers from throughout Central United States reporting to him. Kenny has traveled to over 40 countries, five continents, uh, serving as a tour manager for Colette for a period of time. And now he, of course, has an administrative position with expertise that he's about to relate to us this evening. I need to tell you that he's married to his high school sweetheart, has two daughters, Diana, and uh, his sweetheart is Diana, and they have two daughters, ages 7 and 14. Kenny lives in Hot Springs, Arkansas, and is going to deal with us this evening and talk with us and share with us more particularly today's topic, COVID-19 update and traveling well experience. <laughs> you know, if you think about it, the last 15 or 20 days has been the most positive time period that we have had in the past nine months as we've been battling uh, this COVID pandemic. For example, on October 30, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention uh, released and, and ordered that their no-sale instructions be removed, allowing for the orderly return and safe return to cruising. On November 9, Pfizer announced an effective uh, vaccine that was 90-plus percent, which they have now increased to 95 percent. Uh, on that same day, Dr. Anthony Fauci, we've all seen him on television, said all Americans could have access and should have access to the COVID-19 vaccine by April. But the new good news continues. Uh, on November 16, Moderna announced its vaccine as being 94.5% effective with over 60 million doses in the pipeline. And on November 17, uh, Pfizer made a subsequent announcement indicating that it was actually beginning trial distribution of its vaccine. But it goes on. Eli Lilly has an antibody treatment that's been granted FDA approval also in this time period. And Regeneron, which you may recall was the treatment drug that was provided to President Trump, is now generally available and in wide distribution throughout the country. So it's... it's uh, as Winston Churchill says, it's either the beginning of the end or the end of the beginning. But we want to now turn this program over to our guest presenter this evening, Kenny Judd. And it'll take just a couple of minutes of housekeeping, but we will go right here and Kenny will be here in a second. All right. Thank you so much, Larry and Paula, both of you. Uh, I'm so excited to be here. You know, this has been one of those times that uh, talking about travel is um, has been a, has been a challenge. I'm, I'm not going to lie throughout this uh, process, but the great news is, Larry, I think you nailed it. There's light at the end of the tunnel, and that's what I'm so excited about. You know, I love Please Go Away's uh, mentality of kind of dream now, travel later, because I think that's exactly what we're doing. Um, mm -hmm. You know, they nailed my background. I always like to just give a little bit, you know, I came from medical. I've been in the oil industry. I, I, I started selling copiers. So I've, I've been in an array of, of industries. And this, without a doubt, has been my favorite. And people ask me why I left medical sales. Um, you know, th this, this picture that I have right here, I'm staying at the Cliffs of Moors. You know, I, I've had the opportunity to go to Switzerland, New Zealand, Machu Picchu, Prague, Vienna, Budapest, Egypt you name it. Um, that's why I've stayed in the travel industry. That's why I moved to Massachusetts. That's why I've worked in different regions. Um, and I think these two quotes to me really hit home of what travel is all about. Number one, the best book I have ever read is between the pages of my passport. I didn't truly understand that until I got into travel. Um, I was always, uh, you know, really enthused with history, but 
standing there and seeing it, feeling it, breathing it, smelling it, tasting it. That's what travel is all about. Um, and of course, for somebody who talks as much as I do, um, you know, travel is the only thing that you that, that can make you speechless only to become a storyteller later. Um, I really believe that because I have stood at the base of the pyramids. I've stood at Machu Picchu and you're completely speechless. And when you come back and you're talking about those experiences, um, you don't realize it, but but you have a captive audience. And so um, Larry kind of mentioned a little bit about Winston Churchill. And to me, you know, going through these challenging times, which this is the most unprecedented thing that's ever happened in our lifetime. Uh, and Colette is very well prepared to handle that. It's something that you know, after 9-11, after everybody was afraid to get on a plane, you know, whatever it is, we've had the ability to look forward um, and, and kind of prepare for these kinds of situations. And so we're going to talk a little bit about that. You know, the great news is it's not just Colette. You know, I know a lot of people in the industry. Uh, Mayflower, I believe, was the first series, you know, that very close with Mayflower. In fact, Matt Greenwald, who spoke, uh, used to be my roommate. He worked at Colette, too. So, you know, this is something that, you know, it's not just about Colette, it's about the industry and it's about what we can do for you. But without a doubt, we've kind of been the leader in this. And so that's something that we wanted to talk about. And what that means is the traveling well experience. You know, a lot of companies out there are preparing to travel in 2021 and what that's going to look like. You know, we're executing it. In fact, Colette started traveling back in July. Uh, we had our first departure on July 3rd. Uh, we did a spotlight on South Dakota. Uh, we had 33 people on that tour and we have had tremendous response and we now have had over 40 departures go for this year. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that uh, later when we get to the survey section, because I think for me, it's one thing for me to say it. It's one thing for me to lead these tours and be engaged. It's another to read direct feedback from our passengers who have been on this tour. So what is traveling well in COVID-19? What does that mean? Is this going to be forever? No, I don't believe that it is. You know, I told the story uh, recently, but, you know, the roaring 20s, everybody has a belief that, you know, it was an oil boom and, and the gangsters and, and young kids really rebelling against the old way. But the fact is the roaring 20s really became the roaring 20s because the Spanish flu had hit and people had been quarantined and they were having to wear masks and they were stuck inside. And as that came to an end, people really wanted to get out and go, you know, whether that be travel the U.S. or Rob Banks, if you're a gangster, since I live in Hot Springs, that's always uh, a big part of the history here. Um, but it really is something that, you know, that's what created the Roaring Twenties. And I believe that's exactly what we're going to see coming out of this, because the first thing that ends when anything happens is travel, because everybody has to put a hold on it. We don't know what's going to happen. But it's also the first thing that comes back. And so those are some of the things that I wanted to talk about. You know, I, I also I am excited about Pfizer's announcements as well as the other companies, because we've been waiting on this and there's been so much misinformation uh, during a year that was already crazy enough that, you know, we're really starting to see a lot of consistency with these companies that are coming out, you know, the 95 percent. Um, that is the, the, the best part about the 95% is, you know, the efficacy is for the over 65 years of age was the 95%. And I think to me, that says a lot because, you know, that, that's our core traveler. Those are the people who want to get out there and they're the most at risk. And the thing that I love is, is the efficacy was consistent across age, race, ethnicity, demographics. It didn't really matter. It was a very consistent result. And that gives me a lot of positive, you know, thought. And so what is our commitment to well-being? And what does that mean for you as travelers? And when I'm talking about Colette, like, remember, you know, this is something that um, is going to be industry-wide. It's not just going to be Colette. Yeah, we're the first ones doing it and we're ahead of the game. But I've talked to a lot of people and it's going to be very consistent throughout the industry. And so, you know, each guest, we want to be able to still create the experience. And we want to make sure that, you know, where you go, what you do, what you're seeing, your health, your well-being is our number one priority. But we want to make sure that you have a great time, too. And so that is our top focus. That's what we're doing. Um, you know, on average right now, we're running our tours at about 30 to 35 percent of the seats open. So that allows for people to space out. You know, when we're indoors, we're going to be wearing masks. I'll show you a picture later of, an, of our actual first tour that we operated. Um, you know, we have a small line, a small group travel line called Explorations. 
you know, those tours are averaging 14 to 19 passengers per departure. And so we're really having the ability to be flexible in a time where there's a lot of people that still want to travel. And there's a lot of people who want to stay home and make sure that they're quarantined and protect themselves. And we completely understand that. <laughs> My mom has not left the house since March and she has every right to feel that way, you know, but there's a lot of people who want to get out there and travel. And so we want to make sure for those people that want to travel and want to get out there and, and experience, um, they want to do it with safety and, and health and well-being being our number one concern. So our classic lines we've brought down right now, uh, we're offering about 150 departures that will average about 21 passengers per departure. Again, leaving that, you know, 30 to 35% open for the motor coaches. Um, when we're going to restaurants, you know, we're going to make sure that we're looking at some of those things. And so smaller groups, first of all, who doesn't like a little bit of a smaller group anyways? Uh, you know, touring has always had that kind of stigma of, well, what is it like? Is it, is it a ton of people getting herded around? It's really not. Um, and that, that's one of the things that we're, we're really excited about is having the ability to look at the smaller groups. But for us, it goes so much further than that. So our tour managers, you know, and this is going to be, I think, an industry standard is automatically quarantined upon their tour. So, you know, a lot of our tour managers in the past would go back to back to back. We're not going to do that. And I don't believe that anybody else is. We're going to quarantine them in between so that we don't have to worry about that. Of course, the use of face mask, you know, in on the motor coach, you know, in restaurants until you're eating, any time of museums, enclosed spaces, things like that. You know, we're going to not only send a mask with you, we're going to ask you to bring one too. The motor coaches are going to be clean from top to bottom. They're sanitized a couple of times throughout the day. And then each evening, there's a deep clean in the motor coach, um, which I am very excited about. You know, I travel every week. I fly. I, I live in these hotels and, and I eat in these restaurants and I'm on the airplanes. And quite frankly, I am incredibly encouraged and excited about the future of travel because it's going to be the cleanest experience that we've ever had. You know, I hate that it took a pandemic and I, and I obviously hate what's happening to the people who have been affected. But moving forward, I think it's opened our eyes to uh, going about things a lot differently. And I'm incredibly encouraged and excited about the future of travel because it is going to be the cleanest experience that we've ever had airplanes, hotels. In fact, I've been on the road. I was just in Kansas not too long ago um, and I was staying in Pittsburgh and the hotel right there was a great sign that this had just been cleaned. The door had not been opened since they had cleaned it. The remote was in a plastic bag that had been completely wiped down. And I could literally smell the cleaning products. I knew this was the cleanest hotel room I'd ever stayed in. Um, you know, the on-tour experiences, we want to make sure that those are still hitting home. And that's where we're coming in. You know, when Larry talked about being the oldest major U.S. tour operator, we're the second oldest tour operator in the world. And so we have a lot of buying power. We have a lot of influence. And so the on-tour experiences, we've really had an opportunity to do a lot of research and dive into these museums, these restaurants, you know, whatever it may be, what is going to be happening? What are their, you know, strategies and protocols and, and mandates? And so that has helped us build, you know, the way that we want to go about these tours moving forward. And, you know, I'll talk about the surveys here in a second, but again, I'm, I'm going to keep referencing, you know, I've just been so encouraged by that. And uh, I'm going to give you a couple of quotes here in a bit from our executive vice president who had a big article in Travel Weekly this week um, that talks a little bit about that. On tour insurance coverages, you know, this is something for me I've always harped. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when I first got into this, I'll own it. You know, I, I was the guy who, ah, you don't need travel insurance. You don't need this. Uh, being in this industry, you know, I buy travel insurance every time I go anywhere. And I tell my people, listen, you know, I don't care what travel insurance you get, if it's Colette's or whoever's, but make sure you have something because it's travel. It's an adventure. You never know what's going to happen. There's rain delays. There's weather. There's things. But that's mm -hmm. why we travel. That's why we don't just sit at home. I always tell everybody, listen, if you want to stay at home and watch Wheel of Fortune at 630 and, and, you know, not go out, absolutely do that. Don't go on a tour. But if you want to have an adventure, you want to see the world and you want to do it the right way, that's the way you want to go about it. So make sure that you always have those insurance coverages and make sure that you're reading those policies and what that means. And, you know, a lot of people think their credit card company is going to have the insurance. You know, that's why you go to a travel professional. 
you want to sit down with Paul and Larry and the other agents, and you want to talk to them about what their options, what's covered, what's the best policy for them, because I can promise you they know better than anybody. But don't just go with your credit card. Don't just do that. Do a little bit of research. Talk to your travel professionals. They've been doing this a long time. You know, between the two of them, I can tell you, I, I love working with people who have been in the business this long because they truly understand it. And so I'm very excited about, you know, please go away. They are on top of it. And so everybody on this call is going to be well taken care of. You know, one of the things that we're going to send out in our documents is the self-screening. You know, my wife is taking my temperature daily. We're taking our kids' temperatures every single day before we go to school. You know, we're watching those, those symptoms, and we're going to send out some protocols before you ever leave. We're also going to have the ability on tour to monitor sy sy uh, symptoms, to be looking at some of the, you know, temperatures. And all of our tour managers have been updated. They are in line with all of the CDC mandates, each country, each city, each state, whatever that may be, because each of them do vary. And so we want to make sure that everybody from beginning to end is on top of it. They understand what that's going to mean for them. Um, and as I mentioned, those hotels, you know, not only are we going to be in, in some fantastic hotels whenever you're traveling, but, you know, they've really been hurt by this as well. And so the protocols and the mandates that they're going to be looking at are going to be fantastic moving forward. Like I said, you know, cleaner hotels, cleaner experiences, no more 60 minutes behind the scenes with the with the light where they're walking around, which I refuse to ever watch because I'm in the travel industry. Uh, but it is one of those things that, you know, moving forward, there's a lot of positive things to look at this. So as we get to the surveys, this is something that I really want to talk about because I think the mentality of, of dream now and travel later couldn't be more true um, with this. But we've had those guests that want to travel. And so the reasons that I want to talk about that are a few. Number one, this is direct feedback that I wanted to share with everybody that have, these are passengers who have traveled. These are passengers who have been on the tours. As I mentioned, we've already had over 40 departures out there. And so the direct feedback is the most <laughs> crucial to Colette and to myself. I tell all of my guests that travel, please be as honest as you possibly can be because we want to know. We can only get better by getting that feedback. And so, you know, we've had an overwhelming majority of our guests, you know, they really felt that the precautionary measures had zero impact on their enjoyment of the tour. And when I tell people that, they'll say, well, what about the masks? And I'll say, well, what about TSA after 9-11, right? People thought we were never going to travel again. Oh, I've got to wait in line. Oh, I've got to go and, and I've got to get screened or I've got to walk through this metal detector. I've, I can't take bottled water. I can't take all of these things. You know, now it's evolved into a normal that we don't even realize, you know, and, and we've gotten efficient with it. And for somebody who flies every single week, you know, to me, that's the kind of mentality I think about. Nine out of 10 passengers said not only did they not feel the experience wasn't diminished, but they would absolutely travel again in 2020 because they felt very comfortable um, of what we're doing during these current conditions. So they truly felt that their, their experience wasn't, was not impacted. They had a great time. They felt very comfortable. They felt safe. Their health was never in danger. Um, and that's what we want to do, not just during the pandemic, not just, you know, while people get the vaccine, but after too, you know, this is going to be a learning experience for future travel for everybody. Um, so we truly believe that this speaks volumes about our ability to meet guest expectations and deliver an outstanding tour experiences that really balances flexibility, wellness, and a very complex travel environment. Um, and so I think for, for everybody out there, you know, talking to your travel professionals, you know, vetting some of these tours, where you're going, what's going on is so important. And that's why I just scream, always go talk to your travel professionals. There's nobody better than Larry and Paul, I can promise you. Uh, as I've talked to them, they're very detailed. They know their stuff. And it is something that looking at future travel, what does that mean for everyone? So the surveys are something that's very important to us. And it has, it, it speaks volumes about what's happening out there. So what are some of the things that you can do? What's happening in the COVID world? How do you protect yourself? You know, it's really no different than, than the things that we're already doing. Um, you know, and it's crazy to me because everywhere I go, there's lines that tell me where six feet are. And, you know, I, I'm six, two, six, three. So I always figure I can just kind of lay down and I'll know exactly how, how far I need to be out. But, you know, bring your mask. We're also going to send you one in your documents. You know, maintain the physical distancing. Wash your hands, which to me, I'm incredibly excited about because I came from medical. I was in medical sales for eight years and it, is, it was astounding to me how many people didn't wash their hands 
Um, these are things that, you know, I think from a just daily perspective, teaching our children, getting comfortable with washing our hands, um, making sure that you're monitoring your systems, uh, your symptoms, and you just know what's going on day to day. You know, out there in the world, we've had a lot of the misinformation. You know, we, we we're wearing the mask, we're washing our hands, we're doing a lot of these things, you know, but people are still gathering together. The schools are still going on. Um, you know, I think the deaths have come down a lot, but it has taught us so much about the future of looking how we're going to be, what we're going to be doing, and what we need to make sure as travel experts that we're looking at in the future. So the Traveling Well experience goes far beyond Colette. As I said, this is an industry um, standard that's going to be for everybody. And one of the things that, that we're proud of is that, you know, we took the initiative and we're not just talking about the Traveling Well experience, we're executing it. And that's something that's very exciting for us. I truly believe that the light is at the end of the tunnel. I can see it. Um, you know, the vaccines coming out by the end of the year, there's going to be 25 million Americans who are going to have access to that vaccine. Some of those are going to be healthcare professionals, um, you know, and the highest at risk. And then each month they're going to continue to roll that out. And, you know, as Larry said, come April, everybody's going to have the ability to do that. So what's that going to mean? It means the floodgates are going to open, right? People are going, as soon as they get that vaccine, they're going to want to travel. They're going to want to get out of their house. Um, there's predictions all over the place that, you know, because people weren't spending money on travel like they typically do, you know, there's going to be a mad dash for it. And so, you know, thinking about it now, getting prepared for the future, you're going to want to do that because I can promise you it's going to happen. It's going to happen quickly. So some of the things that we've done, you know, we send a, a wellness uh, declaration before each tour asking everyone to fill that out. We do provide the face masks in the pre-tour documents, as I mentioned previously, but we want you to go ahead and, and bring your own as well. Our sedan service, our motor coaches, as I said, every company now has set protocols and mandates that they must meet. Um, you know, for example, my daughter is a perfect example. Um, she's starting club volleyball and we're struggling finding a gym because every day at five o'clock for practice, they come in and they completely clean the entire gym and they use very specific cleaning products that, you know, every school, every gym, every church, every major facility is using to really make sure that, that, that it is a clean experience and that, they, and that they have disinfected it. Um, you know, so our motor coaches are going to be using those. The sedan is wiped down. Uh, if you have the sedan service, you know, to the airport, whatever it may be, we will be operating tours with smaller groups. You know, this is something that we've already seen for the future of travel. You know, we started our exploration line a while ago because really we knew that that was the way it was heading. People wanted different experience. Everybody's a foodie. You know, my wife, and she's not here, but she's okay with me saying this, she can't cook. But I'll tell you what, she'll watch a cooking show. She'll get on Pinterest. All of a sudden, she's got recipes she's going to try, right? So everybody's an expert in food and in wine and in travel because they've seen it on TV. And so we really understand that the smaller group experience gives you the flexibility to do things that you can't do in a larger group. So we kind of see that being the future of travel down the road anyways. Of course, all of the training, you know, we're really going to have the enhanced training for the tour managers as well as the PPE collateral. Um, you know, our tour managers have to have a 97% approval rating to continue on with the tour manager. I, you know, Larry mentioned that I, I have tour managed in the past and without a doubt, it is the number one most challenging thing to do in travel because trying to make 30 to 40 people happy with 30 to 40 different personalities um, can be a bit of a challenge. I kind of feel like I should go back and apologize to every teacher I've ever had because I was the guy in the back of the room, you know, cracking jokes and making people laugh when I should have been paying attention because what I realize is how hard that is on the teachers. Our tour managers very much have that same challenge, but they do an unbelievable job not just making sure that you learn the history, you know, they're kind of half your history professor, half your concierge. Well, now they're, they're diving into an expert area of mandates, protocols, training, um, health facilities, what all of those things include so that when you're on tour, you don't have to worry about that. You know, I talked about the motor coaches being disinfected, but also having hand sanitizer available at times. We all know how hard it was to get hand sanitizer there for a little bit. Um, for me, I'm, I'm kind of a softie. I like the one with aloe because my hands don't dry out. Couldn't find it anywhere, right? So um, I've used more lotion after washing my hands than I ever have in my entire life. We're going to continue to work with partners 
and restaurants for social distancing protocols. And so what that means is if you've ever been on a tour and you have 40 people and you have that big long table of everybody at one table, you know, we're not gonna do that. And quite frankly, I'm excited about that. You have the ability to kind of mix up those seats, sit with different people, but along the way, we're gonna be using disposable menus, making sure we're at smaller tables, you know, having the ability to sit outside more. When I travel through Europe, that's one of my favorite things is sitting outside because it's such a different dynamic, but they have heat lamps. You know, you're sitting in squares, you have the ability to people watch and, and sit, uh, you know, espresso at a cafe or whatever it may be. Uh, and so you're gonna have more opportunities like that moving into the future. And I'm really excited to see what the culinary experiences are gonna have from, from a, you know, a flexibility standpoint and what they're gonna be looking to do too. Um, and protocols have been put in place so that if somebody starts to fill in well, we immediately have protocols that are enforced uh, by our export tour managers. And again, this is gonna be across the board. People are gonna be trained in a way that they've never been trained before so that we know exactly what's gonna happen. Um, you know, and, that, and part of that is monitoring your systems. Talking about travel as a whole, you know, this has been a challenging year. Uh, I'm kind of glad it's coming to an end. So we can start 21 with a fresh outlook and kind of start over. Um, you know, I, I, I think not enough people ate their, their black eyed peas on New Year's Eve. So uh, I challenge everybody to do that this year. So we have a little bit better luck moving into 21. Um, but it is going to be one of those things that moving forward, you know, travel isn't going away. It's not going anywhere. And in fact, you know, a lot of these destinations are, are they live and die by travel. The global economy in 2019 10.4% of the entire global economy was tourism. That's a huge number when you're really thinking about it. So, you know, if, if you're one of those people who think, oh, is travel ever going to be the same? It will be, without a doubt. And we're going to get those protocols set in place. The vaccine's coming out. As I said, I'm so excited. My, my mom is just, I mean, she is, can't wait. She's in line already. If she can be, I'm telling you to get it. Uh, because it is something that people want to travel. They want to get back out there. They want to see their family. They want to do those things. Um, and I think that, that we're getting to that point where we're ready to go. Some of the things that, you know, I really like to talk about is, is financial stability, because I know that's a big, big question right now. You know, do I think about travel now? What happens if companies go under? So some of the tips that I really want you to kind of think about, you know, and we've been a very financially stable company our entire life. We've been debt free. And so it's something um that that we're very proud and very strong and we know we're going to be here you know we've given back over 115 million dollars in vouchers and and all these wonderful things that have happened but what does that mean for you when you're thinking about travel what you really want to be looking at is these as companies with financial strength are they a member of the ustoa the easiest way to explain the ustoa um you know the question that i always ask is would you ever bank with somebody that is not fdic insured you wouldn't Every bank that you're going to work with needs to be FDIC insured. Same thing with the USTOA. Any company that you're going to travel with, any tour operator, that essentially is the FDIC of the travel industry. You have to have a million dollar traveler's assistance program in liquidation to be a part of that. You know, you want to look at the debt done in Bradstreet. What does that mean? You know, for instance, we're a 4A2. I had no idea what that meant until recently because I had to learn what that meant. So strong balance sheets means we are poised to support you, even in uncertain times, exactly where we're at right now. There's a lot of other companies out there too that are very similar and you wanna make sure that you're asking these questions. And again, that's why you go to see those travel professionals. You don't try to book it on your line, online. You don't look at a discounter, you don't, because quite frankly, your agents are gonna get you a better deal. They're gonna get you a better situation than you can ever even fathom. Um, you know, and the other thing is, we don't own ships and we don't own hotels. So we don't accrue this debt that a lot of companies do. Um, and the reason we do that is it gives the flexibility to make sure our doors were always going to be open, you know, for our travelers, our agents, you know, who are, are anybody that's engaged with the company. And you want to be asking these questions. So when any time that you're looking at companies, you know, these are just kind of the questions in the industry you want to be asking um, when you're sitting down with your travel professional and kind of going over that, you know, why do I want to know that stuff? Do they give their money back? You know, do you have the ability to get vouchers? Can I move my tour? You know, does the tour operator carry $50 million in liability insurance? You know, all of these wonderful things um, you want to ask. Colette is lucky enough that we can say yes to all of them. Uh, and most, you know, most of our competitors, and, and I know the people that, that Please Go Away work with, they absolutely can answer yes to these. And so this is something that you want to make sure that you're always asking. 
and have the ability to do so. And the reason that I bring that up is because the online discounters, um, you know, I, I think Larry calls them the online phantoms. And, you know, without a doubt, travelers got burned this year. I had more calls from friends, from family members, um, from relatives all over that, that had booked, you know, an all-inclusive this, or they had a wedding planned or whatever it was. And unfortunately, they had all worked through these online discounters. And I can just tell you that for me, you get what you pay for. And at the end of the day, these online phantoms, as I like to now call them, I'm going to steal that from Larry. Um, you know, it, it really is. It, it has, has burned bridges. Costco is a perfect example. And I don't bring this up to not Costco. Costco will tell you they're not travel agents, right? That's, that's not who they are, but they're going to offer some travel out there. So people go in, they're doing their shopping. Hey, they see I can go on a tour. Let me book this through Costco and I'm going to get, you know, a rebate, whatever that may be, you know, but when something happens, when schedules change, there's nobody for you to contact. And so we've seen a massive jump. And in fact, 20% growth has happened since the pandemic in people who have never used a travel agent. And now they're wa walking in and working with travel professionals and travel agents because they understand the value now of that travel agent. It is crucial. I have said it from day one. Um, even before I got in the travel industry, I always used a travel agent because I knew that's what they did. They were the experts. And I say that because of times like this, who do you call if you've booked with Costco? Who do you call if you've booked online with these phantoms? There is nobody. And in fact, there was nobody on the calls. There was nobody answering emails. Um, you know, I had Airbnbs booked. I couldn't get a hold of anybody to, to talk to them. Uh, and the, the reason that I bring this up is the biggest misconception in the travel industry, I think, is what does a travel agent do? Does it cost me more? What am I going to have to do? It does not. It does not cost you anymore. In fact, they're experts and they're going to find you a better deal. But when things happen, this is what we want to talk about. Um, you know, and, and a perfect example is a good friend of mine who had a wedding book, used a discounter, the phantom, you know, he's still getting married. He still wants to go on his honeymoon. And he can't get a hold of anyone. The resort is making him call through the discounter because that's who booked it. It wasn't the directly with the resort. It wasn't a travel professional. It wasn't anybody. You know, they had to cancel their honeymoon and they lost about $12,000. And I mean, those kind of things are why I always bring this kind of stuff up because it is so crucial um, that you don't use these online discounters for crisis like this. Moving forward, the vaccine at that 95% come April, everybody's going to have it. Um, you know, depending on where you are, you may get it earlier. And I can tell you the sooner you start thinking about it and the sooner you can get something planned, the better it's going to be because a lot of these um, companies, these hotels, these restaurants, everybody in tourism was, you know, they were drastically damaged during this. And we understand that. And so it's something that, you know, we've really worked hard on making sure that we've kept our prices the same. We haven't increased, but you're going to see a lot of that over the next couple of years. You're going to see hotels, airlines, all of this go up because the demand is going to be there. And so, you know, that's why you want to make sure that you're paying attention to that. You're planning now, you're dreaming now so that you can travel later. And I think that that's a perfect statement. Um, and just kind of reiterate before we jump into the questions, you know, Colette has had about 40 departures that have operated. We've had about 15 to 20 groups of people since July. You know, it's different, but people have adapted and they've adapted so quickly because of the desire for travel. Um, that travel really hasn't wavered for the excitement, the degree, the, the want. You know, like I said, after 9-11, Everybody thought, ah, I can never go through TSA. I don't want to deal with that. I'm never going to travel again. I'm never going to get on a plane. Um, you know, and we've seen nothing but growth since 9-11. And that's something that we're expecting after this. Um, and from Colette, we've been pleasantly surprised with the number of guests that are excited to travel and yearning for more borders to open so that they can travel. The top 10 most researched destinations on our web traffic, without a doubt, six of the top 10 are still Europe. So it's not just going to be domestic travel moving forward because once we get the vaccine, the airlines have also set protocols in place. Um, they're talking about the possibility of rapid testing for international flights. Newark direct to London with United has actually started to implement that right now where you can have a rapid test in the airport 
so that upon arrival, you're not quarantined and you don't have to deal with that. And you can have it coming back. You're going to have a lot of these protocols set in place that are going to make traveling easy. United's done that as well with, with Hawaii. I have a good friend who lives in Hawaii. He was wanting me to come out. Uh, and he said, you'll get that rapid test in, in San Francisco. And then when you come in, you don't have to quarantine and we can, you know, we can go out and sit on the beach. You know, those are the kind of things that people are doing right now. And so, you know, I do know there's a lot of questions. I hope that I could talk a little bit about, you know, what we're seeing, what we're doing, what the airlines are working on, as well as the government from behind the scenes. You know, we've had the president uh, and the CEO of the USTOA at one point work for Colette. So we're very close contacts. I can tell you without a doubt, the positive vibes that are coming over the next uh, few weeks into the end of the year are fantastic. And that's why we're having these, these series calls. And that's why Please Go Away wants to make sure that you're informed, you understand what's going on, because the misinformation out there is crazy. Uh, but hopefully today we've been able to clarify kind of exactly what's going to happen for everybody moving forward. You know, work with your travel professionals, get it planned now, think about the future, understand the protocols that are going to be in place. And, you know, one of the things that I tell everybody is, do we expect to wear masks forever? No. Are you going to have to have a vaccine to travel? No. You know, we really do expect uh, by the end of next year, you know, I kept hearing that term new normal. Yeah, to a degree, there's going to be a new normal as far as cleaning protocols, as far as making sure that disinfecting and, and smaller groups and, and some of those things, I do think that will be the new normal. Do I think, you know, flying with a mask and traveling? No, I don't. I don't think that that will happen. Just like in 1918 with the Spanish flu, if you ever see any of those pictures, people are wearing masks at a football game, you know, and then two years later, you have the roaring 20s. So, you know, that's what we kind of see moving forward. Um, and I truly want to thank everybody for joining us today. I'm going to be here to answer questions. I know Paula was going to be monitoring the chat box. And so I'm going to stick around, but I wanted to leave about, you know, 15, 20 minutes for questions in case there were some. Uh, and I truly appreciate everybody joining us. I'm really excited about uh, the close of 2020 heading into 21, because I tell you, it's going to be exciting. Great. Thank you very much, Kenny. I think that was very informative. And I know that I learned a lot, and I'm sure that everyone else did as well. So we'll get back here and do just a fin few finishing things. Dream Now, which we've all been doing for the last eight to nine months, we know there's been various ways. We've had some of our travelers tell us that they got out their photo albums and some of their memory DVDs from some of our feature tours. Um, here at Please Go Away, we started a private Facebook group that we have gotten into and had a lot of interest in doing an around the world travel and we're continuing that so we're all been dreaming and now as Kenny also mentioned it's time to plan because as he indicated that there's fewer flights they're going to limit numbers on buses and things of that nature so that it really truly is the time to start planning but you still need to plan to travel later now, by later, we're not saying two years down the road, but monitor and be aware of situations. And um, when you feel that it's safe, then it is time to be able to travel. I know that even here in the office, we all miss tours. So we understand exactly when people say, well, I'm disappointed my trip didn't go and I'm looking forward because we are as well. There are a couple of ways that we can assist you with your travels. Um, a couple of the ones that we're going to talk about this evening are our As You Like It program. And if you're new and haven't attended any of our online or live shows when we did that, what an As You Like It travel is, is that it provides you flexibility so that you can pick and choose when and what you like. Maybe the dates of our some of our tours don't work. You don't like the exact itinerary. Maybe you prefer not to include some of the extra things that we're doing. So you're more in control. You go on your own, and you don't have the assistance of one of our personal hosts or hostesses. You might be able to do a city stay or something that you're totally on your own. You could join a co-let group on dates of your choice where you would get there, get yourself home, but you obviously would have a, a personal tour or a tour manager with you throughout the tour. 
So you have a more individualized travel program. One thing is to do work with um, a travel professional because the rules now are very different. They've changed a lot over the last few months as far as cancellations and refunds and moving to other tours if, if you decide that maybe it's not quite the time to go. Um, even more so now than in the past, it's important to deal with a reputable travel professional and not one of the unknown entities that you find on the internet. Or the newest one is travel agents that are involved in a pyramid scheme. And I, I don't know that they all realize that that's what's going on, but we see these regularly on local and other area buy sell trades. So um, we get a laugh because it says learn to be a travel agent in two weeks, and that just doesn't happen. So we're happy to help you um, if you've got want to go on your own, if you have a family group, a small group of friends, anything of that nature, please give us a call and let us try to assist you. So Larry, you want to share some information with us maybe about our feature travel program? Be glad to, Paula, and I'll be very brief, ladies and gentlemen, uh, but I too, before I say anything more, would like to thank Kenny for an excellent presentation representing the entire travel industry. We do appreciate it, its expertise. It will allow each and every attendee and the people with whom you share your information that you've gained here to be better informed to make a decision that you alone decide is applicable for you. Uh, another pillar that we use very regularly uh, and strongly in our program is what we call feature travel. And feature travel is uh, something where we allow it to fit directly into the Dream Now, Plan Now program. As this next slide shows, the As You Like It that Paula has just talked about fits directly into this Dream Now, Plan Now. But another point to ponder is that so do our uh, Colette programs that we have with uh, plans for our feature tour, which the next slide will show as being personally escorted group departures where features have been added by our team, such as inclusive airfare, special dining experiences, things of this nature. We use a quality program like Colette as the foundation and then we use the building blocks of additional features to create something in our select personally escorted tour program where one of our hosts or hostesses is always with you that truly you can't find anywhere else because it's one that we've created. So let's just quickly take without spending any time, no dollars or anything like that, a look at our 2021 feature travels that we have in place with Colet Vacations. Moving right down, the line detailed brochures, you can get those from us online or hard copy. We're not going to go into them this evening. But the first one coming up in April is Normandy D-Day Beaches. That's what we call it, plus other World War II memorials. That's April 14 through 23. We have already, I think, uh, if I remember correctly, about 18 individuals on that. Michigan, uh, Michigan's Mackinac Island, the Grand Hotel, and much more. Uh, June, we have 40-some people already reserved on that departure. It's one of our feature tours. Secrets of South Dakota, it's something that we have just announced, but it's going to be in June of next year. Uh, and it's going to be a great way to see our great America. The lakes and trains of the Alps, Switzerland and Italy, we already have a nice nucleus reserved on that tour that will depart in July. Sedona's Red Rocks plus uh, USA's Canyon Country moving into the fall of the year, going to the southwestern part of the United States. This is all part and parcel of our program that we have dubbed See the USA with Please Go Away. And then moving on, we also have the Best of Europe's Christmas Market scheduled for December of, of 2021. As I mentioned, uh, brochures and detailed in in manner are available for you on all of those. If you just contact us, we'll see that you get them. So Paula, I think that's what I wanted to say, and I'm going to turn it back to you. Okay, thank you. Um, let me get up here because I think it looks like we have quite a few questions. Um, I think that you may have... 
given this answer somewhat, Kenny, but um, someone has asked the question, um, can you give us some idea of the tours that you have already done since the COVID started and you began with tours again in July? Yeah, absolutely. Our first one was South Dakota. We've ran Colorado, Mackinac Island, Southern Charm, which is your Charleston, Savannah area. Um, all of our national parks tours have pretty much went America's Cowboy Country, National Parks, Canyon Country. Um, you know, they've primarily all been domestic, of course, uh, but we have in the Bluegrass Country and Smoky Mountains. Um, those have been the primary tours that we've been able to operate because of uh, their location and then the protocols and the mandates that have been set. So, you know, anywhere from probably about 12 tours that we've been able to operate with about 40 departures so far. Okay. Um, the next one says, once the COVID vaccine is available, are there any plans for Colet to require travelers to get that? We will not require it from our end. Uh, we will continue to monitor and be in line with, you know, whatever the travel industry, USTOA, the government um, kind of stipulates. As far as mandating it, no, Colette will not. We'll highly recommend it, of course, uh, but we're not physicians. We're not going to put any kind of stipulations along those lines, but we'll continue to be in line with whatever those protocols are from, uh, from the CDC, government, all of those uh, corporations. Okay. Um, is Colette able to get them booked on one of those tours that you've mentioned? I think that's a I know question. that. Please go away, <laughs> sir. Yeah, I sure know where you can get booked on that. Uh, we do have some dates that are still going to travel in 2020, um, some holiday tours that are going to still operate. So I highly recommend you go sit down with your travel professional or do it virtually or over the phone. They can get you squared away for sure. Perfect answer. Um, are the hotels still doing breakfast buffets and how will that work? So most of the hotels right now have gone away from um, the buffet style. What they're doing is they're creating individual breakfast um, so, you know, it may be kind of like a sacked breakfast. It may be um, individual meals that are already created depending on the hotel. But as far as the buffets right now, they really went away from that. And uh, none of our hotels have been using those. So they're pretty okay. much pre-made meals ready for you. Uh, I like to call them your sack lunch just because in my head, that's what I picture. Obviously, it's breakfast and not necessarily in a sack, but <laughs> that's the mentality of it. Okay. And, and obviously things change frequently the stay in age. And so that could certainly be different by the time we are able to operate groups again or Absolutely. have travelers go. Um, a question is if someone on the tour tests positive for COVID, will everyone on the tour have to quarantine? So that's, uh, that's been the most popular question without a doubt. Um, if somebody tests positive for it, we do immediately quarantine everyone to arrange tests for everyone. We want to make sure that everybody has the ability to get tested at that time. Um, we do immediately quarantine that individual, even if they have symptoms, we immediately pull them. So if they're, you know, can't taste, smell, you know, all the symptoms that, that we all know of, uh, we do immediately quarantine them and um, they must get a test. If they test negative, they are allowed to rejoin the tour at that point. Um, if they test positive, we then stop the tour and give everybody the ability to get the test before we continue on just to be on the safe side. Okay. I guess kind of to further that question a little bit, um, because I, I did have someone recently ask me this when they were looking at doing a tour um, this fall. So they get home from their tour and someone contacts Colette and says, I just completed such and such a tour and I've tested positive. Do you go back and notify everyone else that was on that bus? We do. We will go back and immediately pull the list of everyone and communicate directly from Colette to those passengers to let them know what's happened. Um, we've been very fortunate with over the 40 departures. We've had zero issues. The closest that we've had, uh, we had a bus, uh, a bus driver's 
wife test positive. We pulled him off the tour. Uh, we quarantined him. We got him tested. He was negative. We allowed him to rejoin the tour uh, because for the rest of the time he was away from his, his wife. That's the closest we've had. Luckily, we've been very fortunate. But yes, in our protocols, we will immediately contact everybody engaged in the tour to let them know what has happened. Okay, that's good. Um, if a major event on a tour is canceled for some reason, are there refunds or alternatives available? So the first thing, and this happens even without COVID, right? I mean, there's just things that happen Absolutely. anytime yeah. on a tour. So this is something we've dealt with. We always have um, a couple of alternatives for any of the destinations or experiences that we're going to have. If for whatever reason we're unable to have an alternate, then yes, anything that you've missed on tour, you are refunded. We're never going to keep your money for something that we don't execute. Uh, but our tour managers are very well trained. We usually have two to three experiences that are somewhat similar to what we're looking at. Uh, and so we will try to incorporate those. But if unable to, we will refund you. Okay. That is all of the questions that I have. Um, Larry, do you have any questions or... I don't see any on my screen, Paula. No, I don't. Okay. All right. Well, thank you all for submitting those. And Kenny, thank you again for your answers. Um, I think our next thing here is I would like to introduce our staff. Um, Kenny mentioned, obviously, calling and talking to either Larry or I, and these are also team members that are here and always happy to assist and kind of helps you to put faces with voices because if you call you're probably going to get nadine jones the lady on the left um, some days you might also if nadine's away from her desk you might reach mary ricky in the middle and then we also have hannah Lori kits that you see there on the right hand side so they're uh, key members of our team and in, involved in a lot of our planning and assisting clients, and um, so there are other members that please feel free to visit with if you call in. So then I think prizes, and hear me shuffle, we have everybody who is attending in their name in a drawing, and we're going to give away two $25 gift cards from Please Go Away Vacations, and our winners are Connie Brunton, and Peggy Duval. And so we will get those in the mail to you. So again, thank you all. Um, you can always contact us if you have questions. Please go away vacations, 1600 Main, Suite A, Great Bend. Email us at answers at travel, please go away .com, or you can always call 800-362-9347.